What is up, gamers? What is currently the most expensive TCG? Well, the last time I did this... It went really well! This time things are changing though. We are keeping the same thing where I take the best five decks from every game and their prices. But instead of doing the duplicate system, because that was like super convoluted and hard to follow. And I framed the video very weirdly for what that type of data was supposed to show. So we're not doing that. This time there will be five different categories that each of the decks will be ranked in. And then at the end, we will tally up the rankings and we will find our answer through that. The biggest thing to note about this is that this video is not going to be going over the nuances of each game. So if you were to actually like try to compete for a world's invite, some games are way more expensive than others. Some have entry fees, some don't. Some you have to travel to more events. All the game's markets are very different. In some games, it's like a couple cards that are super expensive. In other games, it's most cards that are really expensive. There's some games where like the generic cards you play change from week to week and some most the cost is from generic cards. This is not going over any of that. This is just going to be a snapshot in time of just prices from different games. I'll give nuance when needed, but for the most part, a lot of that doesn't super matter in this analysis. So with that disclaimer out of the way, here are the games we are doing. First up is Magic the Gathering. Yes, this is modern. It's not standard this time. Please stop harassing me about it. I got the point after the first comment. Please get a grip. So we have Nadu, which is $935, Jeskai Control at $1,065, Boros Energy at $650, Mono Black Midrange at $1,325, and Goyo's Vengeance at $685. Next up is Lorcana with Emerald Steel Bucky for $600, Amethyst Ruby Bounce for $250, Sapphire Steel Ramp for $350, Ruby Sapphire Sisu for $300, and Amber Steel Song for $400. Then it's Yu-Gi-Oh! with Snake Eye Fiendsmith for $965, Yuvel Fiendsmith for $900, Tenpai Dragon at $370, Runic Stun at $185, and Branded at $350. Following that, we have Flesh and Blood with Azalea at $680, Nu at $1,110, Victor Goldmane at $880, Dash at $400, $150 and Kaio for $700. Then it's Pokemon with Gardevoir for $40, Lost Zone for $60, Lugia for $70, Raging Bolt Ogre Pond for $95, and Charizard for $65. After that, we have Grand Archive with Wind Lorraine for $370, Fire Merlin at $360, Wind Tristan at $695, Slime Sylvie at $470, and Water Nico at $665. After that, is Cardfight Vanguard, and the decks used is in consideration for post ban list. So we have Shiranui at $510, Ava for $370, Zorga for $260, Messiah for $350, and Leonorn for $350 as well. Then we have Digimon with Numemon at $295, Mirage at $95, Yellow Vaccine for $305, Imperial Dramon at $90, and Belfamon at $355. Next up is one. One Piece with Red Purple Law at $370, Yellow Enel at $450, Black and Yellow Luffy at $250, Luchi at $225, and Jewelry Bonnie at $290. Then we have Shadowverse Evolve with Egg Haven at $85, Control Haven at $140, Disdain Dragon at $145, Thief Sword at $130, and Control Abyss for $180. And the last game and last minute edition is Universes with Endeavor. Endeavor 3 at $435, Ochako 4 at $480, Tamaki Amajiki at $705, Mimic at $385, and Rodan at $445. So those are all 55 decks and their prices. Starting off with our first category, it is just the average price of decks. We'll start with the lowest and go up to the highest. So in last place, we have Pokemon with an average price of $66 per deck, then Shadowverse Evolve for $136, then Digimon for $228, then One Piece for $317, then Cardfight Vanguard for $368, then Lorcana for $380, then Universes for 
$590, then Grand Archive for $512, then Yu-Gi-Oh for $554, then Flesh and Blood for $764, and then first place is Magic for $932. So average price is a pretty good statistic for games that have generally pretty close deck prices. It's not a great statistic for games with big varying prices like Yu-Gi-Oh, where they have two decks at 900, two decks at 350, and then one deck at 200. So the average price for $550 isn't really a real number for Yu-Gi-Oh, but for the most part, this is a pretty decent statistic for like most other games. Next up, we have the cheapest deck category. So this is comparing every game's cheapest deck and then ranking them. So the rankings of these decks, at the bottom we have Pokemon with Gardevoir for $40. Then we have Shadowverse Evolve with Egghaven at $85. Then we have Digimon at Imperial Dramon at $90. Then Yu-Gi-Oh! with Runic Stun at $185. Then One Piece with Luchi for $225. Then Luakana with Amethyst Ruby Bounce for $250. Then Cardfight Vanguard with Zorga for $260. Then Grand Archive with Fire Merlin for $360. Then Universes with Mimic for $385. Then Flesh and Blood with Dash at $450. And then in first place again is Magic the Gathering with Boros Energy at $650. So really this statistic just shows what is the cheapest option you could spend in order to play competitively in the game. And then following the cheapest deck category, we have the most expensive deck. We have Pokemon with Raging Bolt for $95. Shadowverse Evolve with Control Abyss for $180. Digital Digimon with Belfamon for $355, One Piece with Yellow Enel for $450, Cardfight Vanguard with Shiranui for $510, Lorcana with Emerald Steel Bucky for $600, Grand Archive with Wind Tristan for $695, Universes with Tamaki Amajiki for $705, Yu-Gi-Oh! with Snake Eye Fiendsmith for $965, Flesh and Blood with Nu at $1,110, and then Magic with with mono black midrange for $1,325. So this shows the upper limit of what a game could reach price wise and how much at most you will be spending on a meta deck. So now the fourth category is the range of prices. So we take the difference between the most expensive deck from that game's cheapest deck. And then we have a range of how big of a difference decks can be in a game. So from bottom to top again, we have Pokemon for $55. Chalvis Evolve for $95, One Piece for $225, Cardfight Vanguard for $250, Digimon for $265, Universes with $320, Grand Archive for $335, Lorcana for $350, Flesh and Blood for $660, Magic the Gathering for $675, and then in first place is Yu-Gi-Oh! with $780. So this statistic is actually pretty good at seeing expensive games because usually cheaper games have a smaller ranges of what deck prices can be because they go up to like 300 while more expensive games where they're breaking thousand dollars or getting near there will generally just have more wiggle room between how expensive their decks can be the only time this might be really bad is if there's only one deck that's like super expensive but the rest of the game is pretty cheap but that very rarely happens in reality but the inverse can happen where there's quite a bit of expensive decks but there's one deck that's just like massively cheap compared to the rest of them that can happen pretty frequently and then for our last category i took all 55 decks and ranked them from most expensive to least expensive and then i added together the rankings for each game so the lower the number, the more expensive the game is, since 1 is the most expensive and then 55 is the cheapest. If there's a tie in prices, then they all are considered that same rank. So if there's 4 decks that are tied from rank 20 to 24, all of those decks will just be considered as rank 20. So here are the placements for those. In last place we have Pokemon with 262 points, then Shadowverse Evolve for 233 points, then Digimon for 200 points, then One Piece for 162 64 points, then Lorcana for 145 points, then Cardfight Vanguard for 143 points, then Yu-Gi-Oh for 109 points, then Grand Archive for 95 points, then in third we have Universes for 92 points, in second we have Flesh and Blood with 49 points, and then in first we have Magic the Gathering at 34 points. This really just shows generally where games place 
price wise and this is kind of like a total price of all the decks but not nearly as punishing for giant gaps in price and now we have gone through all five categories in each game's placement what is statistically the most expensive tcg in the market right now i'm doing this like the last category where i added together all the placements and then the lower the total score the more expensive the game is so in last place with a perfect score of 55 points we have pokemon which came in last place in every single category this generally is going to be a running theme every time one of these videos happens because of the sheer volume of product pokemon gets opened due to the insane collector's market of the game and having an iron fist on the children market pokemon will generally be at the bottom and realistically it should be that way because no other tcg could keep up and stay alive if they had pokemon's prices the only time pokemon might rise up is if they have some insane 40 dollar staple like shaman ex or tapu lele gx from way back in the past but outside of that pokemon will generally always be at the bottom of these lists next up in 10th place is shadow vs evolve coming in 10th place in every single category giving it a total of 50 points so shadow vs evolve is bushy road's newest tcg and i believe it's the first and only online card game that got turned into a physical card game which is super cool so out the gate shadow vs had a player base from the online card game that started playing the physical card game as well this game is extremely popular in japan right now and it's slowly been gaining traction in english as well in the next couple months we'll start seeing the first real competitive season for shadow vs evolve and i'm very curious on the attendance rates for it and you're welcome different fight nothing beats advertising like showing that the card game is cheaper than basically every other card game on the market coming in in ninth place we have digimon coming in ninth place in every single category other than range where it got seven bringing it to a total of 43 points so Digimon is super interesting because they have like $50, $70 secret rares that some of the decks play, which when you hear that at first, it's like, oh my God, this game's expensive. But there are some decks like Mirage and Imperial Dramon where their core is so strong that they don't play these secret rares anyway. So realistically, most of Digimon's price from what is shown here is from these secret rares. And if it wasn't for those in three of the decks, Digimon could very well have been below Shadowverse as well what i'm really interested by is when the release gap from english to japanese comes together which i think is happening next year how will that affect digimon's market because i've seen in other tcgs that are japan first and english later the meta gets mostly solved while in japan so whenever it comes over to english there's generally an idea of cards that are really good being expensive and then the cards that end up being bad being cheap so I'm interested to see if Digimon will also close that type of gap in the market as well. And also from the last video, Digimon peeps, you guys are the coolest, swaggest group of people out there. And I love you all. Even though I don't play your game, your community's sick. You guys are chill. I fuck with you heavy. Coming in at number eight is One Piece. It got seventh in cheapest deck, ninth in the range, and then eighth in the other three categories. So One Piece is probably the best TCG right now with its prize support. Due to how crazy the prize support is, this game has exploded in popularity, especially with the strong IP of One Piece. It's kind of shocking how cheap this game is. Coming in eighth out of 11, games is pretty good for a game that has been extremely popular as of recent which means bandai has been keeping up with product releases pretty well one piece is definitely the biggest bang for your buck and your time out of all the tcgs on here just because of how good the prize support system is and i haven't actively played it myself but i get told a lot that this game is really skill intensive so one piece coming in eighth is pretty good coming up next is a game that should have been down here last time which is card fight vanguard at seventh place it got fifth in cheapest deck, sixth on its ranking, eighth on its range, and then seventh on expensive deck and average deck. This brings Vanguard to 33 points. So last time I did this, it was honestly really piss poor timing for Vanguard because they had a $700 deck in there that was on its way out of the meta in that following month. But even after that change, Vanguard would still have been 
at least fourth place on that list, which is still pretty crazy for Vanguard. It's gotten down quite a bit since last year because Bushiroad has done a better job at making sure its promos are more accessible and there's enough in stock for everyone to get them. There's still a couple outliers that are super expensive, but for the most part, the promo situation has been getting better. The one big thing right now is there is a generic one of staple that every deck plays right now called Bracing Angel Ladder, and it was printed in a set where there wasn't that many printings within a case. It was like two or three max. So this card right now is $80 and it's a staple because it counters the best deck in the meta in Shiranui. So most of these decks are playing it. Next month it is getting reprinted and in Japan it brought it down to like $15-ish if I recall. So in the future hopefully Vanguard will be cheaper than it is now as well. But compared to last video it is a lot better than what it was. It's definitely the biggest difference in price since the last video. Coming in at number 6 is definitely the game with the most diverse us player base, which is Lorcana. It got 4th in its range, 7th in its ranking, and then 6th on the rest of them, giving it 29 points total. So Lorcana has been really cool to watch from the side, because at the start it was super expensive, just due to not enough stock for the amount of demand, but over time Lorcana has done better at making sure there's plenty of stock, players to have more access to the game. They still do have some cards that are like 30 to $50, but for the most part, it's been generically pretty good. It's been really cool to see this game pull a bunch of people that have no history with card games and start playing card games just because of how strong of an IP Disney is. So later down the line, I'm curious to see if Lorcana will hover around this price range for a while or once they have a full competitive circuit going, if their prices will start varying a lot more. But right now, Lorcana is in a pretty healthy state. In fifth place, we have Grand Archive. It got fifth in the most expensive deck and the range, and then got fourth in the rest, giving it a total of 22 points. Grand Archive is a game that unfortunately suffers quite a bit from its high price point, but since its release, it's done a really good job at maintaining a player base. So now they have a really strong core foundation, and the biggest thing to work on for this game is lowering the price entry point, which sometime in the last month, even the Grand Archive creators did comment on that and say they will start reprinting more cards more frequently to help lower this big price point. Because Grand Archive does have quite a few cards that are like in the $40 to $70 range, and that is what is increasing this price so much. So hopefully the next time I do this video, those reprints would have already taken effect and start lowering the price of the game. And it can very easily get below L Lorcana if it does that. At number four, we have Universes. It got sixth in range, fifth in average, fourth in most expensive deck, and then third in cheapest deck and its total ranking, giving it a total of 21 points. So Universes was a very last minute addition to this, and I don't personally know anyone that actively plays this game. So some of this information could be a little bit off. But yeah, for the most part, Universes does seem to be a pretty expensive game. If you are a player that likes playing in the chain or the stack in other TCGs, you'd really Really like universes because that's like the entire game is interacting like that. I don't have much else for context to say because I don't play the game enough. So if any universes players watch this video and have like any context or nuance they want to add in, please comment because I'm super interested about it. The game is releasing Attack on Titan soon. So since it's a new IP, I think it should come down because I remember whenever I first looked at the game when the My Hero game, when the My Hero collab came out, it was pretty cheap at that time and has just gone up since then. So we'll see. I'm interested on how this will end up in the future. And in third place, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! currently, which has a pretty crazy spread of its ranking. It's got the eighth cheapest deck because of Runic Stun. It is fifth in ranking. It is first in its range. And then it's third in most expensive deck and average price of a deck, which gives Yu-Gi-Oh! a total of 20 points. So Yu-Gi-Oh! is super hard to evaluate right now because it's in a tier zero format. And there's realistically only three decks that can win an event. And two of them is stuck with a Fiendsmith slash 
slash buyer package, which is driving up the cost immensely with multiple cards being 50 plus dollars and some of them even hitting $100. So that's why they have two decks in the $900 range is because of that fire Fiendsmith package. But the decks that don't play that package are actually kind of cheap. So Yu-Gi-Oh just had like a really big range of prices, which is very hard to evaluate. I think this is a good ranking for it though, from what I hear is happening with the game and from asking other players who play the game. They think this is a fair assessment. So yeah, it's been very weird watching Yu-Gi-Oh after seeing it's like super diverse format almost a year ago and then and having a bunch of decks be really affordable. Like I don't think many broke $400, but now in this current format, it's basically play the $900 deck or play Tenpai Dragon or don't play from what I'm hearing. So hopefully Yu-Gi-Oh can bounce back into those really affordable days because right now I've seen a lot of sentiment of frustration from the Yu-Gi-Oh community. All right, coming in at number two, we have Flesh and Blood coming in second in every category except for range where it got third, giving it a total of 11 points. So Flesh and Blood, I don't have much to comment on. It's just usually a pretty expensive game. I know last time I did this video, there was a whole whirlwind of chaos. Flesh and Blood was definitely the most shooken up from that last video. A lot of that reason was because of some dude saying it's a loot box system before a game, which uh, honestly, thank you that guy because he took a lot of heat off me and he took a lot more heat. But yeah, the biggest thing I took away from all of that from before was that there were plenty of ways to compete on a budget and the really expensive variants of decks aren't as necessary as in other games in order to do well in an event for. So I can't give you much more than that. If you want to see those cheap decks, check out Flesh and Blood content creators because they are much more well versed about the game than I am. I, I can't really add much more than seeing the prices here. And now coming in first place, if you've been watching this video this whole time, you should probably guess, but if you did it and you just skipped up here, go back to the start of the video and go watch it. Get your contacts before you comment some goofy stuff. In first place, we have Magic the Gathering, where it got first in every category other than its range, where it got second, giving it a near perfect score of six points. So yeah, if you were paying attention to the video, it got first in every category but one of them. It has a deck in first, third, and fifth in the total rankings, and two of those decks break $1,000. So like, it's no surprise Magic is here. The biggest thing I'm curious about is I'm, I got no clue what the price of the format was, before Modern Horizons 3 came out. So I'm curious to see if Modern was way more expensive back then than it is now. And if I do do this again, would Modern be a good format to do again? I'm thinking Magic will probably just always be first place if it's Modern format, which just makes it like kind of weird. So is there another format that's like popular enough that can compete with Flesh and Blood, but not always beat it? That's what I'm curious about. And that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be civil this time if this video goes viral again. This is all just in good fun and just doing a bit of an experiment. Please don't attack other TCGs. Don't attack me for doing this. That was a huge issue the last time I did it. And let me know what you guys think about this process. I think this is way better than what I did before because I also just like frames the last video super poorly. And I think this just paints a much better picture on how expensive these games can be. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you guys in the next one.